B O A Productions. I told you. Maybe you were right. Operation Northwinds was a 1962 plan by the U.S. Department of Defense to stage acts of simulated or real terrorism on U.S. soil and against U.S. interests and then put the blame of these acts on Cuba in order to generate U.S. public support for military action against the Cuban government of Fidel Castro. As part of the U.S. government's Operation Mongoose Anti Castro Initiative, the plan which was not implemented, called for various false flag actions, including simulated or real state-sponsored acts of terrorism, on U.S. and Cuban soil. The plan was proposed by senior U.S. Department of Defense leaders, including the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Lyman Lewis Lemnitzer. Lemnitzer was born in Honesdale, Pennsylvania, on August 29, 1899. He graduated from West Point in 1920 and then served in the Philippines. In June 1942, Lemnitzer was promoted to Brigadier General and assigned to the staff of General Dwight Eisenhower. His work involved forming the plans for the invasions of North Africa and Sicily. Lemnitzer was promoted to the rank of Major General and in 1945 was one of the senior officers that negotiated the German surrender. He would later be accused of making it possible for some leaders of the Nazi party to elude investigations for war crimes. After the Second World War, he was assigned to the Strategic Survey Committee of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. In 1950, he was placed in command of the 11th Airborne Division and saw action in the Korean War. In March 1955, Lemnitzer was promoted to the rank of general and named commander of U.S. Army forces in the Far East. He was named chief of staff of the Army in July 1957, and he was appointed as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in September 1960. Um, guys. I'm up here. During the Bay of Pigs crisis, Lemnitzer advocated that President John F. Kennedy launch an attack on Cuba. Kennedy refused and reminded him over and over again that he would not commit U.S. combat forces to save the operation. Kennedy told Arthur Schlesinger that he would not be overawed by professional military advice. Schlesinger added he thought Lemnitzer was a dope. Sometime after this event, Lemnitzer described Kennedy's attitude as absolutely reprehensible almost criminal. On July 20, 1961, at a National Security Council meeting, Lemnitzer presented Kennedy with an official plan for a surprise nuclear attack on the Soviet Union. Kennedy was disgusted and walked out of the meeting and later remarked to Secretary of State Dean Rusk, and we call ourselves the human race. On March 13, 1962, General Lemnitzer presented Robert McNamara with a top-secret memo urging President Kennedy to order a variety of shocking incidents to create a rationale for invading Cuba. Codenamed Operation Northwoods, the memo suggested that the administration should arrange a terror campaign in Miami and Washington that would create international revulsion against the government of Fidel Castro. President John F. Kennedy summoned Lemnitzer to the Oval Office on March 16, 1962, where they discussed Operation Northwinds. Kennedy rejected the idea, and three months later, he told Lemnitzer that he was being moved from the Pentagon to become commander of U.S. forces in Europe. Lemnitzer took up the appointment in November 1962. He became Supreme Allied Commander of NATO in January 1963. And later that year, Kennedy is assassinated.
The memorandum, that Lemnitzer drew up, has since been declassified. For shits and giggles, I'm going to let Lemnitzer, read it to you. It's very long, so he's not going to read all of it, just the steps he listed, for his plan. This is the link, where you can read the complete, Operation Northwoods, memorandum. It's also below, in the video description. I'm going to take you to the website real quick, just to show you, how to navigate it. Just grab the link, below this video, and drop it into the address bar, of any search engine. Once there, if you scroll down a little, you will see the pages, of the actual, documents. The first document, is already chosen, which you will see there. If you scroll farther down, it shows the text, which is a little easier to read. Now, Lemnitzer, will read you his plans, for terrorism, against America. Subject. Justification, for U.S. military intervention, in Cuba. 1. The Joint Chiefs of Staff, have considered, the attached memorandum, for the Chief of Operations, Cuba Project, which responds, to a request of that office, for brief, but precise description, of pretexts, which would provide justification, for U.S. military intervention, in Cuba. 2. The Joint Chiefs of Staff recommend, that the proposed memorandum, be forwarded, as a preliminary submission, suitable for planning purposes. It is assumed, that there will be similar submissions, from other agencies, and that these inputs, will be used as a basis, for developing a time-phased plan. Individual projects, can then be considered, on a case-by-case, -case basis. 3. Further, it is assumed, that a single agency, will be given the primary responsibility, for developing military, and paramilitary aspects, of the basic plan. It is recommended, that this responsibility, for both overt, and covert military operations, be assigned, the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Pretexts, to justify, U.S. military intervention, in Cuba. 1. Since it would seem desirable, to use legitimate provocation, as the basis for U.S. military intervention, in Cuba, a cover and deception plan, to include requisite preliminary actions, such as has been developed, in response to Task 33C, could be executed, as an initial effort, to provoke Cuban reactions. Harassment, plus deceptive actions, to convince the Cubans, of imminent invasion, would be emphasized. Our military posture, throughout execution of the plan, will allow a rapid change from exercise, to intervention, if Cuban response justifies. 2. A series of well-coordinated incidents, will be planned, to take place, in, and around Guantanamo, to give genuine appearance, of being done by hostile, Cuban forces. a. Incidents to establish, a credible attack. Not in chronological order. 1. Start rumors, many. Use clandestine radio. 2. Land friendly Cubans, in uniform, over the fence, to stage attack, on base. 3. Capture Cuban, friendly, saboteurs, inside the base. 4. Start riots, near the base main gate, friendly Cubans. 5. Blow up ammunition, inside the base. Start fires. 6. Burn aircraft, on air base, sabotage. 7. Lob mortar shells, from outside of base, into base. Some damage, to installations. 8. Capture assault teams, approaching from the sea, or vicinity of Guantanamo City. 9. Capture militia group, which storms the base. 10. Sabotage ship in harbor. Large fires, naphthalene. 11. Sink ship, near harbor entrance. Conduct funerals, for mock victims. May be a lieu of 10. B. United States, would respond, by executing offensive operations, to secure water and power supplies, destroying artillery, and mortar emplacements, which threaten the base. C. Commence large-scale United States military operations. 3. I remember the main incident, could be arranged, in several forms. A. We could blow up a U.S. ship in Guantanamo Bay, and blame Cuba. B. 
We could blow up a drone, unmanned vessel, anywhere, in the Cuban waters. We could arrange, to cause such incident, in the vicinity of Havana, or Santiago, as a spectacular result, of Cuban attack, from the air, or sea, or both. The presence, of Cuban planes or ships, merely investigating the intent of the vessel, could be fairly compelling evidence, that the ship, was taken under attack. The nearness to Havana, or Santiago, would add credibility, especially to those people, that might have heard the blast, or have seen the fire. The U.S. could follow up, with an air-sea rescue operation, covered by U.S. fighters, to evacuate remaining members, of the non-existent crew. Casualty lists, in U.S. newspapers, would cause a helpful wave, of national indignation. 4. We could develop, a communist Cuban terror campaign, in the Miami area, in other Florida cities, and even in Washington. The terror campaign, could be pointed at refugees, seeking haven, in the United States. We could sink a boatload of Cubans, en route to Florida, real, or simulated. We could foster attempts on lives, of Cuban refugees in the United States, even to the extent of wounding, in instances, to be widely publicized. Exploding a few plastic bombs, in carefully chosen spots, the arrest of Cuban agents, and the release of prepared documents, substantiating Cuban involvement, also would be helpful, in projecting the idea, of an irresponsible government. 5. A Cuban-based, Castro-supported filibuster, could be simulated, against a neighboring Caribbean nation, in the vein, of the 14th of June invasion, of the Dominican Republic. We know that Castro, is backing subversive efforts, clandestinely against Haiti, Dominican Republic, Guatemala, and Nicaragua, at present, and possible others. These efforts, can be magnified, and additional ones, contrived for exposure. For example, advantage can be taken, of the sensitivity, of the Dominican Air Force, to intrusions, within their national airspace. Cuban, B-26, or C-46 type aircraft, could make king burning raids, at night. Soviet bloc incendiaries, could be found. This could be coupled, with Cuban messages, to the communist underground, in the Dominican Republic, and Cuban shipments of arm, which would be found, or intercepted, on the beach. 6. Use of MiG-type aircraft, by U.S. pilots, could provide additional provocation. Harassment of civil air, attacks on surface shipping, and destruction, of U.S. military drone aircraft, by MiG-type planes, would be useful, as complementary actions. An F-86, properly painted, would convince air passengers, that they saw a Cuban MiG, especially if the pilot of the transport, were to announce such fact. The primary drawback, to this suggestion, appears to be the security risk, inherent in obtaining, or modifying an aircraft. However, reasonable copies of the MiG, could be produced, from U.S. resources, in about three months. 7. Hijacking attempts, against civil air, and surface craft, should appear to continue, as harassing measures, condoned by the government of Cuba. Concurrently, genuine defections, of Cuban civil, and military air, and surface craft, should be encouraged. 8. It is possible to create an incident, which will demonstrate convincingly, that a Cuban aircraft, has attacked, and shot down, a chartered civil airliner, en route from the U.S., to Jamaica, Guatemala, Panama, or Venezuela. The destination, would be chosen, only to cause the flight plan route, to cross Cuba. The passengers, could be a group of college students, off on a holiday, or any grouping of persons, with a common interest, to support chartering, a non-scheduled flight. A. An aircraft, at Eglin AFB, would be painted, and numbered, as an exact duplicate, for a civil registered aircraft, belonging to a CIA proprietary organization, in the Miami area. At a designated time, the duplicate, would be substituted, for the actual civil aircraft, and would be loaded, with the selected passengers, all boarded, under carefully prepared aliases. The actual registered aircraft, would be converted, to a drone. B. Takeoff times, of the drone aircraft, and the actual aircraft, 
will be scheduled to allow a rendezvous, south of Florida. From the rendezvous point, the passenger carrying aircraft, will descend to minimum altitude, and go directly into an auxiliary field at Eglin AFB, where arrangements will have been made, to evacuate the passengers, and return the aircraft, to its original status. The drone aircraft meanwhile, will continue to fly, the filed flight plan. When over Cuba, the drone will begin transmitting, on the international distress frequency, a May Day message, stating he is under attack, by Cuban MiG aircraft. The transmission will be interrupted, by destruction of the aircraft, which will be triggered, by radio signal. This will allow ICAO radio stations, in the Western Hemisphere, to tell the U.S. what has happened to the aircraft, instead of the U.S., trying to sell, the incident. 9. It is possible, to create an incident, which will make it appear, that communist Cuban MiGs, have destroyed a USAF aircraft, over international waters, in an unprovoked attack. A. Approximately, 4 or 5 F-101 aircraft, will be dispatched, in trail from Homestead AFB, Florida, to the vicinity, of Cuba. Their mission, will be to reverse course, and simulate Fakir aircraft, for an air defense exercise, in southern Florida. These aircraft, would conduct variations of these flights, at frequent intervals. Crews would be briefed, to remain at least 12 miles, off the Cuban coast. However, they would be required, to carry live ammunition, in the event, that hostile actions were taken, by the Cuban MiGs. B. On one such flight, a pre-brief pilot, would fly, tail and Charlie, at considerable interval, between the aircraft. While near the Cuban island, this pilot, would broadcast, that he had been jumped by MiGs, and was going down. No other calls, would be made. The pilot would then fly, directly west, at extremely low altitude, and land at a secure base, an Eglin Auxiliary. The aircraft, would be met, by the proper people, quickly stored, and given a new, tail number. The pilot, who had performed the mission, under an alias, would resume his proper identity, and return to his normal, place of business. The pilot, an aircraft, would then have disappeared. C. At precisely the same time that the aircraft, was presumably shot down, a submarine, or small surface craft, would disperse F-101 parts, parachute, etc., at approximately, 15 to 20 miles off the Cuban coast, and depart. The pilots returning to Homestead, would have a true story, as far as they knew. Search ships, and aircraft, could be dispatched, and parts of aircraft found. Holy moly I don't know how much more, I can take. Less than a year, after Kennedy, removes Lemnitzer from the Pentagon, he becomes, Supreme, Allied Commander, of NATO. The Center for NATO and European Studies, at Kent State University, was renamed, the Lyman, L. Lemnitzer Center, for NATO, and European Studies. Why? What is wrong, with this country? This guy, should have gone to prison, he shouldn't be a hero, as the New York Times portrays him, in his obituary. America needs to clean house, and get this country back to its roots. Run, of the people, by the people, for the people. Let's separate, from NATO, the United Nations, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Federal Reserve, the Trilateral Commission, the Bilderberg Group, and all those other, Illuminati-infested, elite, organizations, that are ruining our country. I've had, just about enough. Stop thinking that your government isn't capable, of committing, terrorism, against its own people. They do this, to convince you to go to war, and then they make money, supplying both sides, with arms. With traitors like this, 
inside our own government, who needs enemies?